before I became an adjuster, I uh, was living in Los Angeles. Don't tell anyone. Um, <clears throat> and I worked for a company called Scripps Networks. And Scripps Networks uh, owns Home and Garden TV, Food TV, Food Network, um, DIY Channel, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and I was. Hang on a second. We got some. <laughs> no worries. Nobody's out there. So, all right. And I was uh, I was an associate producer. I did video production stuff. And so I'd been in, in video production um, and broadcasting, kind of at the broadcasting level for. Uh, Six, six or seven years, I think, by that point. And I had variously worked, done like uh, broadcast sports. So like a uh, wide, wide world of sports, like ABC, mm -hmm. you know, stuff, golf, like major like PGA golf tournaments. I did video stuff for a, a news, uh, like a top 20 market news channel, worked in the studio, did a bunch of like stuff like that. And I, I liked it. It was fun, um, but it was always, and this could be just part of my personality. It was always somebody else was saying, "Matt, do this. Matt, do that. Make it, Matt, make it look like this. Matt, you know, whatever, whatever it was," and not me, like making the creative decisions. Certainly, had I like just stuck with it and ignored, you know, when the adjusting thing popped up, and just have been like, "Well, that's an interesting. I'm just going to keep plugging away with this." You know, that was 35 years ago or what, 25, 30 years ago, right? When I, I would have had like a 30 year career in broadcasting. I certainly probably by now would be the person being like, you know, Bob, you do this, you know, Jane, you do that, you know, whatever. And ma ma I'm making but the creative decisions. Now. I do that now with my own business. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, it, th there's paths in life, right? So it's, it's, it's not so much that, um, it was, well, you know, I'm super glad I picked adjusting over that. It was just that I decided that this sounded more interesting and fun to me and had more like upfront potential for revenue and for income. Um, and the thought in the back of my mind was, and this, and when I get into my like origin story here with how I heard about this and how I got into it, this is this is what my thought process was. And that was, well, if I make all this money and I don't have to work the whole year, then I can go do whatever the heck I want. I can buy my own cameras and lighting gear and audio, and I can go shoot whatever it is I want to shoot and edit and whatever, right? And so that's what I. That's basically what I did. So, and I heard about adjusting from my sister, who was living in Nashville and was friends with a guy named, uh, a girl named Tiffany and a guy named Dale, and they were like in their little friend club group, whatever. They went to the bars and partied, and you know they were in their twenties, and. Uh, Dale's dad was owned a I firm called Paysetter, and which Dale and his brother now kind of run. Um, and my sister credits herself with getting Dale and Tiffany together. Dale Dale Brassfield and his wife Tiffany are they're married now. Um, I actually saw them at Elevate a couple of weeks ago. And but she told me she's like, "Hey Matt, you know what you should do?" Is we're having a conversation about work or whatever, you should do what my friend Dale does. He goes out on these hailstorms all summer long and makes $75,000 and then goes and plays the bars the rest of the the year over the, you know, because, because Dale is a songwriter and he's, he sings and right. plays and he's, he's very, very good. Um, he actually performed at a pace at our claims conference a few, uh, that was maybe 15 years ago. Gosh, it was that long ago. Anyway, um, Oh, man. So that's how I heard about it. And I was like, well, that sounds kind of too, way too good to be true. Let's tell me more about it. Let's, you know. So I looked into it more, made some phone calls, or whatever, um, went to Vail National. Um, and at that time, like the, really the only adjuster, adjuster training school that was there, veteran adjusting school wasn't around. I don't know if Mile High was a thing yet or not, but really the one that everybody, all the firms were like, Vail is the one you need to go to. It's called Vail Training Solutions now. It's owned by Sedgwick now. But back then, it was Vail National Training. And you couldn't just like buy a course and go do it and then just whatever, just pay for it. You had to be sponsored by an IA firm, right? So I was sponsored by Worley, who I never ran a claim for until like my very, very ever, last ever storm uh, or last ever claims assignments was with Worley. So that's a whole other story. Um right. So I went and did that. It was a th I think it was a three week program, and it was in Mechanicsburg, PA, 
and went with a a buddy of mine, his two brothers and their dad. And we all, you know, had little hotel rooms. The hotel was $20 a night. And it was just like a little mom and pops. This this is how like, inflation's a, a thing. I was total sidebar here, but I was looking at like today's numbers, like dollar amount versus like 22 years ago or whatever. I made my first $100,000 $100,000 in 2003, $114,000. In today's dollars, that's $250,000. It was absurd. Anyway, so did the training, learned Xactimate, right? And then um, failed the state farm certification test the first time. And then Hurricane Floyd hit. That was 99. Um, I think it was like Ophelia, maybe, and Floyd. And I missed Floyd because I, I failed the State Farm. Like, I didn't know that there was other companies I could go work for. I was like, well, all my friends, the guys I know, um, are they're all going to, to do the State Farm thing, and I just have to work for State Farm. And so I missed it. And I, so I didn't do – so I went back to – and I was uh, – let's see. Um, stayed in L.A., kept working at Food Network. Main, I worked mainly for Food Network. And then the next spring rolled around – and my buddy called me. He's like, "Hey, I just got a call from Pilot, and they're sending people to state to Chicago for a big hailstorm. It was a huge. It was like the most, it's one of the most expensive like storms up to that point. And I think it was the most expensive hailstorm of all time at that point. Um, at, do you want to go? They, they asked me to st- if I knew anybody, and I said I knew you. And so I'm calling you to tell you to call it Pilot and see, you know, see if you want to go, you know, L.A. to Chicago." And I was like, okay. So I called in and basically talked to the dispatcher because he's like, you don't have any experience. I'm like, well, yeah, but I went to Vail, you know, and I really want to, I really want to go. I could be there. I'm, I'll leave as soon as we get off the phone. She's like, okay, right. State Farm has a rule, or at least they used to, where they they needed to have one or two or three new people deployed on these on these big events because they wanted to, to keep training up and developing new people. So anyway, so that was me. So I jumped in the car and I drove 36 hours. Um, well, I back up one step here. <laughs> I walked into my uh, the executive producer's office at Food Network and um, quit. I gave him like one minute's notice and he about lost his, he flipped his lid and uh, I got an earful. Not a good- You'll never work in this town again. But it's basically what he said. <laughs> and so- um, I was like, well, I mean, I just got and in my mind. I'm like, I got to do this because I, I, I was doing like Dave Ramsey's like debt snowball right then. I was like, and I was hyper disciplined on this and was like, I made $459 a week, my take home part. And I had it all budgeted out perfectly where I was paying off these stupid things that I bought when I was in college or whatever, like an old iMac that, you know, I defaulted on it. And, you know, it's just dumb kid stuff. I don't know why we, we give young people credit cards. Anyway. Whole other story. <laughs> so, and I'm like, but, but I'm, I, I know if this is it's going to take me 18 months to pay this all off using, you know, this, this method if I stay here, but I could probably, I might be able to pay it off this summer. And I did, by the way, I paid off all everything that summer. And so I was like, I got to go, I got to look, I got to take care of this. Right. So I left, jumped in the car, drove all the way to almost straight through. Uh, I stopped for a few hours, like four hours. Let's see. I think I stopped for four hours once and slept. I was was stupid. Anyway, pulled into Chicago, drove straight to the State Farm Claims office. I'm wearing like a Hawaiian shirt and like, you know, board shorts and flip flops. And I walk into the office and it's a State Farm office, right? And so everybody's wearing red shirts and red red polos and khaki pants. And, you know, I just kind of like, Step in, like, I'm here, you know, you get everyone to start this thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And every the, all the conversations, like, stop, and everybody looks at me, and then goes back to their conversations. And I'm like, and I see this guy, he, like, leaned out of an office and, like, tipped his glasses down his nose, and he pointed at me and did this number. And so I headed back down the hall, and that guy's name was Tommy Measles, and he was my my first manager and he was like, no nonsense. He, he pulled me into that room and he's like, who are you, <laughs> first of all? And uh, why aren't you wearing 
khaki pants, a polo shirt, and not and regular shoes. He's like, if you ever any pilot storm you ever worked, you have to wear those things. If you don't, do, do not ever ever show up to a, a homeowner's house or to a cat office without wearing khaki pants, polo shirt, and you know, not tennis shoes or flip flops or whatever. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Grabbed some supplies and grabbed my claims, and then that was my first storm. And it was I vowed that storm was so stressful that I vowed that I would never do claims again when I was driving away from it. <laughs> As an adjuster, you need to know more than just how to read an HO3 policy and how to sketch a three-level house in Xactimate. You also need to know how to tell hail damage from wear and tear on composition shingles. The number one resource for damage identification books, trainings, and certifications is Hague Education. Not only that, but they provide building inspection and desk adjuster trainings and certifications as well. These are the guys who make the classic Hague Damage ID books that I used for years to educate myself, my insureds, and quite a few roof sales guys on what is damage that we can pay for and everything else. Looking at you, bird poop. Get a discount on all books, tools, certifications, and other trainings with the code ADJUSTERTV at checkout at HagueEducation.com. You know what's boring? Insurance policies. You know what's not boring? More Adjuster TV vids right here.